This video I'm going to be talking about um, sort of the end of cellular respiration. This is my fourth video. The last step to cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. Okay, or sometimes we'll just abbreviate that to the ETC. And I just want to um, think about everything that we've done up until this point. Let's look at the equation for cellular respiration. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 makes a 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Uh, plus ATP. Let's think about what we've made so far, or used rather. We've uh, used glucose, and we have made all of our carbon dioxide. We used glucose in step number one. We made all of our carbon dioxide in step number two. Haven't seen any oxygen being made, haven't seen any water being made, and we have made ATP in both steps one and two, but we're actually not done making all of our ATP. So uh, in the electron transport chain, we're going to see oxygen being used, we're going to be seeing water being made, and we're still going to be seeing more ATP. And so again, thinking about the mitochondria, step number three takes place along the membrane between the inner membrane and or between the matrix and the intermembrane space. So I'm actually going to draw the membrane, okay? And along the membrane, uh, let's label this, we will call this the outer or er, we'll call this the matrix and we'll call this the intermembrane space down here. So along the membrane, we end up having several transmembrane proteins. Okay. So these proteins span the length of the membrane and they will help us in our electron transport chain. And so I'm uh, this is sort of going to be a basic video about this, not at all um, very in-depth. So we also have made NADH and FADH too, and this is where um, they come into play. Remember in um, the glycolysis video I told you that NADH is an electron carrier. It's like our pizza delivery person. It picks up the pizza in one place, drops it off somewhere else, goes back, picks it up, then drops it off somewhere else, doesn't eat any of the pizza, right? So similarly, NADH just carries electrons from one place to the other, doesn't use up any of the energy. And it has picked up electrons at various places. It picked up electrons in glycolysis, picked up electrons in the um, Krebs cycle, and this is where it drops them off. So, at, let's just say our first membrane protein here, NADH, drops off both electrons that it's carrying and the hydrogen and turns back into its form when it doesn't have the electrons called NAD+. That electron now, I'm going to draw it as a green dot, is transferred to the transmembrane protein. Okay. At that point, we then get, let me do a new color here. The hydrogen that is dropped off um, ends up being transported across the membrane from the matrix into the intermembrane space using some of the energy from the electron. The electron is then transferred to the next protein. Okay. At the next protein, we use again some of the energy to transport a hydrogen into 
the intermembrane space. Along it goes again to another protein, transferring hydrogens, and so on and so forth. Okay? And um, I'm not telling you any of the names of the proteins and where the hydrogens are being transferred might not be entirely accurate, but this is a very basic um, video about the electron transfer chain and just generally how it works. Okay? So after this happens, we end up getting more and more hydrogens crossing the membrane, okay, into the intermembrane space. We also have, not only do we have NADH, but we also have that other electron carrier, FADH2, that drops its electrons off later into the electron transfer chain, but it basically does the same thing as um, as NADH, it just drops it off later. So that's a question that you'll sometimes be asked, um, who produces more ATP? Um, and it ends up being NADH because its electrons are used more in the chain, the transport chain of electrons, than FADH is. But so notice what's happening here. We are bringing hydrogens across the membrane into the intermembrane space. Remember that hydrogens, these hydrogens are ions. They are positively charged. So we end up getting something here called an electrochemical gradient. Okay. And this is a gradient because, first of all, let's just think about the concentration of stuff. Now we have a high concentration of hydrogens down in the intermembrane space and a low concentration in the matrix. This is why we have to use the energy from the high energy electron to transport the hydrogens across the membrane because this transportation is actually a form of active transport. We are going from a low concentration to a high concentration. And that is active transport. Um, so merely there's more hydrogens in the bottom, but the other thing you have to notice is that all the hydrogens are positive. And if we know anything about charges, we know that like charges repel each other. So all of these positive charges do not want to be near each other. So for multiple reasons, um, these hydrogens do not want to be there because of the high concentration and also because they are all positive. So we build this concentration up, and I'm going to just draw some more membrane here. Or right, you know what, I'll draw my protein first. Okay. We now come to a protein which we will give a name, and its name is ATP synthase. And let's think about that. We know from our biochemistry unit that all enzymes end in ACE, so this is an enzyme that is also a transmembrane protein. We also know that enzymes tend to be named after the things that they work on. Let's see what we hear there. We hear ATP and synthesis. So ATP synthase is going to be an enzyme that helps generate ATP. And it does that by making use out of our electrochemical gradient and allowing the hydrogen ions to go the way they want to go from high to low concentration, basically by facilitated diffusion, letting them go through the membrane. Because remember, hydrogen ions are charged. They can't go straight through our membrane. And of course, even though this isn't a cell membrane, this is still a phospholipid bilayer. Okay. So we're allowing the hydrogens to go back the way that they came. And in the process, this ATP synthase protein turns and ends up generating ATP from ADP and, of course, a phosphate group, an inorganic phosphate. And that's how ATP is generated. And that's why we mentioned before that NADH ends up creating more ATP because it ultimately pushes more hydrogen ions through and that is directly related to 
how much ATP is actually made later. Now, we're not done yet exactly. So that's how ATP is made but we haven't talked about what happens to this electron when it gets to the end of the chain. Well, what actually happens is some of our hydrogens over here end up combining with oxygen and they gain some electrons and we end up making water. So notice what, what this is meaning here. Um, we made water, very last step of all of cellular respiration, and look what we used, oxygen. I mean, everyone tells you how important it is to breathe, and yet this is the only time in which oxygen is actually used during cellular respiration. It, just the very, very last step as an electron acceptor. However, um, if oxygen wasn't there to accept the electrons, the whole thing wouldn't work. So that's uh, the end of this. That's the electron transport chain, okay? And I'll be talking more about what happens when we don't have oxygen in a later video.